What is up guys, Media Master Menard here today bringing you guys another video and last night I saw Detective Pikachu with my girlfriend and both of us walked out of the theater very pleasantly surprised. I mean I don't think there's been a video game movie this well made maybe ever guys, it's that serious of a good movie. Um, I will give a shout out to the Assassin's Creed movie, I thought that was actually a decent movie but this movie is way better than that movie. Um, it's a really solid film, so let's get into the details of why I liked it so much. Like a lot of kids, I've grown up playing the Pokemon games and really enjoy them, and so that's kind of why I was a little bit worried about this film. I've played every generation, so why would they ruin one of my favorite franchises by making a live action movie? Nobody likes those, let's be honest, guys. But the more and more I gave it a chance after seeing the trailers, the more and more I thought, hey, maybe this looks a little bit decent. The CGI looks incredible, and I think it's gonna I think it's gonna turn out alright. So I'm so glad they handled this trailer correctly. Unlike the Sonic movie, which, oh my gosh, I will not see that movie unless they like redo the whole thing and re-CGI up Sonic because he looks really bad right now, but let's get off that tangent. So, this movie starts off and we get to see Mewtwo in the, a lab and he's being experimented on and right off the bat I'm like, damn, these Pokemon look really, really cool and really good. And after that you see Mewtwo escapes and kind of causes some chaos and I'm like, okay, this is a good, a good start to the movie. And then so we get transported over to a different area and we get to see our main character, Tim, and he used to want to be a Pokemon trainer, but now he's an insurance seller. And so one of his friends is trying to make him catch a Cubone and get back into Pokemon training. And I thought it was so funny because this Cubone was like so little compared to him. And I didn't imagine Cubones being so small when I played the game, I guess. And that's kind of one thing throughout this movie that you see a lot is you get to see the comparison of... Pokemon to human and what sizes they are, even though I don't know if they're actually canonically accurate, the size of some of these Pokemon. I mean, Snorlax should have been way bigger in my opinion, but I'm getting off on a tangent. We'll talk about that stuff later on. So, Tim finds out that his dad has died in an accident, and so he goes to a city called Rhyme City to kind of take care of his business, collect his dad's property, etc. And we find out that he hasn't been in contact with his dad for a while. And so this is kind of where the story really kicks off. He's investigating his dad's apartment and he meets a Pikachu. And so this Pikachu can talk to him and he can talk to the Pikachu. But no one else can understand the Pikachu. And all they hear is Pika Pika. And honestly, the way they made his Pika Pika sound was so cute. I don't know how to explain it, but... When you heard Pika Pika, I was like, damn, how did they make this little electric mouse look cute when pretty much every human hates mice and rats and rodents in general? So, I mean, it's just a testament to how prevalent Pikachu is in popular culture today. I mean, everyone recognizes him, everyone loves him. I mean, he's just adorable. So on top of Pikachu, we get to see Tim also meet Lucy Stevens and the Cliffords. And the Cliffords are basically the CEOs and the presidents of this huge corporation that came up with the idea that humans and Pokemon should live side by side. And I think this is such an interesting concept of that maybe we shouldn't be keeping them in Pokeballs. It was kind of explored in Pokemon Black and White. Maybe this is a little bit of animal cruelty, but in this city, they're gonna live side by side with us and they're gonna do tasks with us. So we get to see some really cool stuff like Squirtles helping the firefighters and a bunch of like Ma champs and stuff doing a bunch of heavy lifting like construction work And I'm like this is kind of what everyone has imagined since they were kids I mean what if Pokemon were really out there in the world and they do such a good job in this movie of making them look Realistic, I don't know if that's the right word, but they look like they fit in with the world and I really really liked that a lot but I'm not gonna go any much more into the plot because that would be spoilers there is a really good plot twist in this movie that I actually did not see coming so overall the plot I felt was very very engaging but there was a couple slow moments where I was kind of like okay let's get on with it and I thought some of the I guess more sad stuff related to his dad in that journey Really, really didn't impact me maybe as much as it should have, but I did really, really appreciate the conclusion of the movie. Let's just put it that way. 
Let's dive more into kind of the Pokemon and how they kind of animated this world because it's a real live action movie but the, I guess, Pokemon are just animated so well into it and it's such a big component of this movie I want to talk about it a little bit more. I mean, just seeing the interactions between the Pokemon and the human are kind of very interesting and each person kind of has their partner, their companion and that's what Pikachu becomes to Tim so I really just liked seeing all the different Pokemon and they did a good job of spreading out the Pokemon am amongst the generations. Obviously there's the most are Gen 1, you get to see a lot of a lot of those guys that everybody loves but there's also some newer people, we get to see a bunch of Tricos, stuff like that. I mean there was a Totodile and the Totodiles look really cool because they had like scaly skin and they did a good job of making them look like you would think they would look like in the real world. The Charizard looked so sick, I mean there was just a lot of really, really good effects in this movie, so I wanted to give that a shout out because the CGI was absolutely incredible. I mean, there was just a ton of cool Easter eggs and nods to fans of the series. I mean, Greninja got a huge shout out, Torterra, I mean, those were some Pokemon that you might not have thought had got into this, but I mean... They were really cool that they did have him in there, and there was just so many cool things, guys. As far as the acting goes, I thought Ryan Reynolds was fantastic. Obviously, he was fantastic, but it was really interesting to see him in the role of a voice actor this time instead of actually having his whole body and face in the camera. But they did do a good job with the face capture, so you could like tell it was him talking. And obviously, some of the funniness of the movie was because it was Ryan Reynolds, but I think it was just all a really gelled well together, a lot better than I would have imagined, to be honest. Um, I thought Justice Smith, who plays Tim, did a very good job always, and I actually thought the weakest part of the movie was Lucy's character, played by Katherine Newton. I didn't think she was, I guess, the best actor, and it seemed very overacted, like it was a rated G movie, like, come on guys, we need to go investigate this! It just sent, seemed like I was like listening to anime voices in a real live action movie, so I thought that was, I guess, a little bit over the top. I think she overacted a little bit. But overall, I thought the acting was good from the supporting cast and the people around it too, and the movie knew when to take itself seriously, and it knew when, hey, we're a movie with Pokemon in it, we don't need to take ourselves too seriously, so I really appreciated that. Overall, it was a really, really solid movie, guys. It wasn't great, it wasn't terrible, but it was a really good movie. And I really recommend you should see it if you're a fan of video games at all. If you're a fan of the Pokemon franchise, you're probably already going to go out and see it. But, I mean, this is a good movie, even if you aren't a fan. My girlfriend isn't a fan of Pokemon or video games at all, but she really thought this movie was pretty good. And so, I think you guys should all give it a check out. I mean, there's just so many cool shout-outs for you guys, for you fans out there. I mean, like, the end of the game, or the end of the movie, sorry, I get it confused because it's based off of a game. At the end of the movie, there's like a battle that's like real life polka floats from Super Smash Bros. And I can't, cannot believe that that was on accident. It was just so many cool different things here or there. The end credit scene had like hand-drawn art that looked like ripped, it, like it was ripped straight out of a game. And it was like hand-drawn art of the characters and it looked like this was the next Pokemon game, guys. Like it looked like they had just gotten a battle with Ace Trainer Randy. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. It looked really good, guys. I mean, go out and see this movie. But, I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Did you like Detective Pikachu? Are you thinking about going and seeing it? And I have to ask, how bad do you think that Sonic trailer was? Because, I mean, that was just terrible. <laughs> um, if you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll maybe bring you guys more movies, TV, video game, and anime content. I'm going to leave a link to my Twitch and my Twitter down in the description below so you can find out when I go live or I post a new video. And until then, this is Master Menard. Sign up. Now look at the top, I'm going crazy, who wearing the crown? Scooly bop, doodly bolly, doodly down. Uh, doodly, doodly, doodly.